Greetings, 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 my V family all over the world. This is your chief. Welcome to week 51. All right. And I'm back in my Wednesday message location. And I wanted to show you my fridge. Now it's with uh, alphabets for my sons to learn. Uh, no more the travel uh, magnets because they will remove it and destroy it. Okay, guys. So this is your chief at freaking 4 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday. Just finished an amazing call with some of uh, our amazing V ambassadors. All right. And I was just thinking just before switching on record what I wanted to share with you guys. Okay. This is week 51. The countdown to the closing of your TAT year of 2022. You have basically... 51, 52, all right? And then we jump and leap into a brand new year called 2023, which I'm calling the year where you define your legacy, okay? Um, and I was just thinking what to tell you guys today, and I wanted to address something which I used to a lot, okay? A lot of people, and, and this applies to everyone brand new and everyone who's been around for a long time, just listen, okay? This is your chief at four in the morning, okay? talking to you from my heart to yours. And I want my Wednesday messages to be something that you gain something from. And today I want to talk about you, right? You, 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 the networker, the entrepreneur, all right? Uh, the downline of Japa and Dato Sri Vijay, our great uh, founders and uplines. Now this journey of ours in networking, okay? And I'm sure by now all of you have clarity with regards to your dreams, what you want to achieve, uh, your financial goals, and the ultimate goal of reaching a point where you never have to worry about money anymore, called financial freedom, where you take control back. And along this journey, I have addressed what you're supposed to do. By now, you don't know it. You haven't watched enough videos from me or Japa or Dato Sri or the V Partners. I talk about the potential challenges you're going to face because that's the reality of any entrepreneur in any industry, all right? Becoming financially free is not an easy task, okay? And it requires you to overcome challenges. But ultimately, it's still up to you, okay? I remember these words, if it is up, if it is to be, it is up to me. If it is to be, it's up to you. And you have to understand, ultimately, you have one enemy, all right? Your greatest challenge is not outside of you. It's not uh, the media, the Google, the, the governments, the lack of regulation of the industry. All these have existed for a long time and it will continue to exist. And if you have intelligent downlines who have common sense, they will know how to handle this. And if you have intelligent prospects and you explain the business well enough, all right, and they go back and Google and they see something negative, they should have enough information from the presentation to prepare them for what potentially they're going to hear or see online, all right, which is written by morons, okay? But that's the fact of any journey of entrepreneurship. There will be challenges, but your greatest enemy, and I've realized this myself over 25 years, all right, and Dato Sri Vijay has hammered this point home to me every single day. You have only one enemy, but man, your greatest challenge is not outside, it's what you see in the mirror. Now, when I look in the mirror, I see the drop dead gorgeous chief partner Senati Raja, but I also see my enemy. Our greatest enemy is how we think, all right, our paradigms, okay. So, for example, okay, the first rule of becoming successful is the ability to remove all self-imposed limitations, right? Because I have come to realize that you are born with limitless mindset. And I have a young son today, he's two years old, and he is limitless. He believes he can climb the cupboard and fly off the cupboard. Now, I don't recommend that he do it, but you can see his thought process. Today, he was lifting a box, which is clearly too heavy to lift. But his attitude towards lifting it was just like, oh, and he looks at me and says, Papa, heavy, and he keeps trying and trying and doesn't give up. And he cannot understand why he can't lift this box because he doesn't have enough knowledge that the box weighs too much or too much heavier than him that he can't lift it. But there was no limitation in his mind. And I realized at that point that all of us are born limitless. 
And along the journey of life, due to who we listen to, our environment, our schooling system, our families, our circle of influence, what we watch on TV, what we read in the news. I never watch news. I never read newspapers. All right. It imposes limitations on you. All right. And the only way you're going to be successful is to try your best to reach back to the mindset of my son. Limitless. I can do anything. All right. And nothing is going to stop me. Now, this may sound very simple and very logical, but it's the hardest thing to achieve. You are your greatest limitation. All right. And that's why I said a few Wednesday messages ago, it's not about learning new things. It's about unlearning. It's about creating paradigm shifts that take you back to the original version of yourself that you believe that you're going to max out, that you believe that you're going to sign up direct, that you believe that you can open up markets, that you believe that you can help your downlines achieve success. But that belief must be so pure, so unadulterated, so powerful that you think you can lift anything. And that requires you to remove the limitations that you have imposed on yourself due to the weakness of your mind, the wrong power of association, the wrong education system, being overexposed to negative people, all right, and empowering the morons in your life to influence the way you think. This is a fundamental problem, all right? So let me remind you again, like 2022, my mantra was born to fly. And I'll remind you why I chose that mantra of born to fly, because I truly believe that if you go back to the original state of your creation, your mind has no limits. Therefore, you can do anything in QNET. You can achieve anything in QNET. If you went back to that state, the problem is your mind is corrupted, is full of garbage. You literally now have to take out your mind, scrub it, clean it, and put it back to reach that original version. So you are a moron. And I'm saying this with love because you are born to be a max out king and queen. That's the funny thing. We were all born to achieve limitless success. We were all born to do anything we possibly could imagine. But along the journey of life, you gave away that power. And if you want to succeed in QNET, you want to be one of these great ones that go on stage, you want to make Dato Sri Vijay and Japaras Bismarck, our great founders, invite you on stage one day as a V Council, ABP, V Partner, Max Out King or Queen. Get that power back. And this requires you, contrary to popular belief, to stop listening so much. Because you think you're strong and you think you are positive minded and you watch a lot of videos, I'm sure. But what you hear all right, drastically sucks out the power that you were born with, all right? Especially if you listen to negative people, if you are in the wrong power of association. I don't hang around any negative person. I don't go for any event or function that is going to take my limitless power away. I stay in the zone of people like Dato Sri Vijay, Japa, even in my family home, I don't allow the news to be switched on. I don't allow any form of negativity to be spoken about. This is going to impact my children. My children only hear that their potential is limitless. They can do whatever they want. I try my best not to stop him unless he's doing something crazy, dangerous. But I explain to him that if you do it carefully, do it. So you have given away that power. You are your greatest enemy. All right? So if you truly... If, if a baby or my son could become an IR, which he will become when he's 18, all right, or younger, all right, if my son could become an IR now at two years old, and I tell him, Max out, nothing is going to stop him. He's not going to listen to anyone. He's not going to allow any form of negativity to hold him back. He is truly in the stage of life today where we all were that I, he believes he can fly with absolute certainty, guys. And that's all you need to bring back. So week 51, stop listening to the world. Shut off everything. All right? Unlearn all the bull sugar that has contaminated your mind. And remember the fundamental truth. You were born with limitless potential. That QNET is not rocket science. 
You don't have to be an intellect. You don't have to have a PhD to understand 3000 BB on the left, 3000 BB on the right. You just have to approach people and talk to them and do the presentation with that limitless belief and attitude and fire in your eyes and they're going to sign up. So don't use everything around you as an excuse for your lack of success. Your greatest enemy is yourself. Right, that you have become no longer limitless, you have become limited by choice subconsciously. You have given your limitless power away. And week 51, you should pull it back with a firm belief system. And the second point I want to address on my Wednesday message, week 51, is the fact that you're not doing the work. See, a lot of people feel that they're working hard, but you're not, all right? You see, working hard, there is a definition of working hard in entrepreneurship compared to your job, compared to your fatherhood, motherhood, and all that. That's a different working hard. That's out of some level of necessity. You're forced to. You don't work hard at your job. You don't get a salary. You don't work hard as a mother or father. Your children are going to be messed up, I guess, all right? So there is some level of working hard that, you think you're working hard, but it doesn't make a damn difference in your life. Now, entrepreneurship working hard is a conscious decision and effort. So now, whoever is listening to this Wednesday message, if you think you're putting in 12 hours, 14 hours a day on presentation, training, follow through, power of association, it still doesn't mean you're working hard because working hard in entrepreneurship is working hard with a different level of intensity. It is no longer just to work hard. It is to work hard out of a desire that it, it gives you a high, that you feel guilty that you don't work hard, that you never want to take a break, that you are afraid to switch off. That kind of working hard. The working hard that Dato Sri Vijay has instilled in me I work hard today. I'm financially free, guys. You know, people who are close to me think I'm a moron. I should be on a beach drinking mango juice with Japa and Dato Sri Vijay. But I'm still working harder than you. This is where there is a problem. When your financially free upline is working harder than you, then you haven't understood what it means to work hard as an entrepreneur. See, an entrepreneur works hard with an intensity. It is almost like oxygen. That if I am not doing something towards my financial success in QNET, into creating successful downlines and leaders and developing leaders and helping people, I feel an immense guilt. I feel like I've wasted my day, my life, my hour, my minute. I get stressed out. I can't sleep at night. You understand? I call Dr. Sri Vijay and I ask him, Anand, today I don't think I did enough. Now, the moronic thing is I've been doing this for 24 years and I'm still working harder than you. Right? I'm not saying this out of arrogance. I'm saying this that my version of work hard is an emotional, intense, crazy, fanatic, psychotic level to a point that it upsets people around me. That you lose your social logic. That you work hard to a fanatic level. That if you are married, guys, all right, then you should always be fighting with your spouse because you're working too hard. My only debate or fight with my life partner, my soulmate, is not because I'm a useless moron, husband, whatever. No. Only argument. You're working too hard. You're working too hard. You're working too hard. And that's our only disagreement in our journey together. Besides that, I'm a perfect guy. Right? So... And every time we have that argument, I don't feel guilty. I, I reaffirm that I'm doing something right. Because if the person closest to you, the most honest person in your life tells you you're working too hard, then you're doing the right thing. So week 51, I don't know how to say this. I want to say it with just simplicity. Work hard by my definition. Work hard by Japa and Dato Sri Vijay's definition. Work hard that it creates a ripple of intensity in your home, in people around you, that people think you are crazy, you are psychotic, you are fanatic, 
that you don't have a life except QNet. That's a good sign. You must work hard to a point that people around you are afraid to talk to you. You must work hard to a point that you forget to eat, that you forget things that normal people have time to do. I forget lunch, dinner, right? I forget to go to the bathroom sometimes. I know it's not healthy, but I just forget because I get immersed in what I do to a fanatic level that it creates discomfort in people around me. It makes my friends feel guilty who are not even in the network. All right? And my son sees this every single day, how hard I work, and I want him to learn by leadership, by example. So week 51, cut the bull sugar. All right? Work hard in whatever you do. I want you to raise that intensity to the point that your spouse hammers you because you are too engrossed in building this platform, this future, this organization for your children. Work hard. Work like a maniac for the next three to five years until you love it, until you feel guilty when you're sitting down on the sofa with nothing to do. Until you, you, you just feel that you have to talk to somebody, call a downline, send a video, whatever. Work hard. That's the only freaking answer, guys. There's no shortcut. Work hard with a fanatic intensity, craziness, psychotic behavior until people say, I have to send you to the mental hospital. So when your loved ones do an intervention and say they have to send you to the mental hospital, that's when you know you're working hard. Are you guys with me? Right? So reprogram your mind. Bring back the power of limitless belief. The way you were born. And work bloody freaking hard this week and next week. That's all I want you to do. Right, guys? Week 51. Raise the bar higher. Week 52. Let's create a record for Japa and Dato Sri Vijay. I love you guys. I'll see you on my Instagram live. Merry Christmas to everyone celebrating Christmas, but don't switch off. All right. Remember what I said in my Instagram life. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Merry Christmas. Hug the kids from Uncle Chief. Convey my love and respect to your parents. All right. But don't switch off. And this week, work freaking hard. Okay.